Yo, what's going on everybody, everybody? Some of y'all are gonna see this on replay. It's not gonna be the longest video. It's not gonna be super short, but I am limiting myself to uh, 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, I will be saying goodbye. But um, look, this is uh, it's a good day. It's a real good day, you know? It's a good day in a lot of ways. It's a good day, you know, um, for the TBKC. Uh, had some very, very good meetings with some very important people this morning. And, uh, you know, having a meeting with these very important people uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things and, you know, a lot of things that need to change, a lot of things that, uh, you know, that we could get better. It's going to be a lot of redoing everything, you know. Um, the, the website was being worked on and, uh, you know, we just doing a full disclosure here. The website was being worked on and it'll be right back up. But uh, one of the individuals, well, uh, a couple of these individuals are very successful. And one of these individuals give me a lot of good advice. And uh, we may be looking into just totally doing redoing the website to make everything more efficient. The way everything is going to be changing with the uh, TBKC is that... Uh, It'll be a lot more business-like, as, you, as you'll see. And what it'll do is it'll free me up <clears throat> to be able to do this more, to be able to uh, be on more pages, to be able to talk dogs more. Uh, I'll have a personal assistant here very, very, very soon. And we'll have an office very, very soon. So it'll free me up to talk to my friends more. <laughs> no, <clears throat> excuse me, but it'll be about work delegation and getting things to where it needs to be. And... Uh, What's going on, Ramos? And and really, all of these changes with the TBKC is just to make it way better, so things aren't slow. Uh, today, I'll be announcing all four of the Jersey uh, Jersey show dates. Uh, we we will be doing at least two more dates. Uh, we want to do three to four more, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but these four dates are already locked in. I just want to do that separate from this. But those four dates are locked in, and I'm hoping that maybe uh, Wednesday. Uh, or Thanksgiving Day, whenever we'll we'll lock in the rest of the dates. But you know, moving forward, everything will work a lot. What's going on, Will? I think things will go a lot more smoothly. Um, everything from the forms to everything, uh, people will be able to get in touch with people at the office. You might not be able to talk to me, but you'll be able to talk to someone at the office. Now, this is the one thing I'm gonna tell y'all. A lot of the back and forth, and this is outside of the TBKC. Um, some someone people text me when I'm on here and message me. They say who did I talk to? I'm not gonna say who I talked to, but one of the things I'll tell you is one of these guys is very successful. Uh his company has been mentioned in some of the best uh biggest magazines out there right now. He's one of the fastest growing companies in the world right now, uh awards all over the place. He knows his shit. When I tell you big magazines, I'm talking about Forbes and different things of that nature. So the brother is on point. And uh you know, another brother is right there with him, and he's making major moves himself, uh, worldwide, big, large-level moves. And uh, I needed help to really, really sit down and break this thing down. I got the dogs part of it, but I wanted to make this TBKC thing go fast, go efficient. And that's why I took my time doing it. Now, as far as the dogs part of it going, what's going on, Rex? I mean, we're not going to argue. We're not going <coughs> to, excuse me. We're not going to argue. We're not going to debate. We're not going to go back and forth. The dogs are what they are. They're going to be what they are. Our standards are very much so similar to other standards, but we're not here to debate with people. And it's, and it's not an arrogance thing. It's a reality thing. You know, we know what the American bully is supposed to be. We're not going to argue with you about it. It's that simple. We're not. Tino, what's going on, brother? Uh, we're not going to keep on with these back and forths. If we say a certain dog is not an American bully, it's just not an American bully. You can have your opinion. You can choose to go breed to that dog all you want to. And if it doesn't fit what we're trying to do, we're just going to move forward. And I'm sure somebody will accept your dog irregardless. But we're not arguing with people anymore. You know, we're not going to argue with you about your dog's defects anymore. Those days are over with. I know, you know, y'all love to tag me and all the stuff that, uh, and all the stuff that, uh, you know, certain people always try to say to get a, a rise out of me or an argument going. But the bottom line to all of this is, is that if you have a screwed up dog in any way, we're just not going to argue about this shit. It's that plain and simple. You know, what we are looking for in our in all of our. <coughs> excuse me. I'm, 
I'm struggling out here today. But in all of our uh, dogs, we're looking for healthy dogs. That's that is our base. That is our foundation. We want structurally sound dogs. We want dogs that are healthy. So by you just showing me a front shot of your dog does really nothing for me. When I'm talking about the American bully, the American bully needs to be able to run. Yes, I did say run. Not just walk, but the American bully needs to run. The American bully needs to be an active dog. We've often talked about bodybuilders. These dogs need to be linebackers. We want our dogs to be able to actually run from point A to point B without dying. Not just walk or sit on the table. We want our dogs to be able to survive and to thrive in whatever conditions. Some of, some of these American bullies probably will have the ability to go out and hog hunt because I've hog hunted with some of mine before. Well, friends have used some of my dogs to hog hunt before along with my Alapahas. But these dogs have to be able to move. These dogs have to be able to survive. Do you not understand that an athletic dog that can run and, and, and survive in, uh, in real climate? Exactly. Dean Navoa, president of the TBKC. See, back to the bullies and this is what it's about you know uh <clears throat> I, that's why i'm so excited i feel like new energy just by having an office now and uh i'm pointing and i shouldn't be pointing because i don't want to reveal that yet but by having an office i'm going to tell you bottom line that allows me to go out and do dog stuff y'all can call them about paperwork they'll have your paperwork out you can call them to set up your shows but this is the, you know th th this is what it is i don't care about what any of those idiots say you know what I mean? This is going to be about judging a dog for perfection. And they hate the word perfection. And we know nothing in this world is perfect, you know, outside of Rihanna. Nothing is perfect. But we're shooting for perfection. We don't want to make excuses for the lack of perfection. We don't want to make excuses, you know, excuses for all the stuff, you know, that, sh that shouldn't be here. This is not an excuse registry. We are changing the tone. We are flipping the page. Whatever you want to say, our dogs will move. That's why when you come to, to this Jersey event, you will see dogs out here that are working. We will have working class dogs and we expect, exactly Danny, as close to the perfect as we can get. And we expect that some of these American bullies will jump in there and do some of the working competitions, whether it's weight pool, whether it's, you know, some obedience trials. We want our dogs to be active. We want our dogs to be dogs. You know, it, at this point in time, we are no longer going along with the analogy of having an unhealthy dog, a dog with a screwed up rear end. The reason why our community continues to look the way our community looks is because we have taken a dog and made it, you know, as my good friend there said, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Woods said earlier, and this is not to be offensive, but we have turned this into, you know what I mean, somewhat of a, a, a special breed. I won't say the exact term, but it's, it's a very special breed, you know, because all of this is, is something that we should not be breeding for. You know, we are breeding for dogs that can't run we are breeding for dogs that can't walk we are breeding for dogs that need to be carried we are breeding for dogs that need to be on the table as as brandon might tell y'all we are breeding for the cincinnati Bengals when we should be breeding for the new england patriots it's just <laughs> this is what we're breeding for and it's not good it's, it's it, it will never be respected it will never go to the level that we needed to go to because bottom line us as breeders have taken on a personality that allows us to make excuses more so than answers you know what i mean and uh the thing of it is is uh <laughs> i ain't messing with you eric you, you see these browns winning man you better stop it but you know the thing that we have to do as a community is we have to up our level let's let's up, up our level do i think that mandela can run a mile ask, ask belinda Derek, if Mandela can run a mile. Me and, me and Mandela at night oftentimes would take a two-mile jog. Mandela did a mile with, uh, what was it? it it's a 20-pound vest, but it wasn't the full 20 pounds. I think it was 12 pounds on his back. Mandela lives, well, lives between Florida and Texas. Mandela does not hide from heat. If it's 100 degrees outside, Mandela will go outside and I will tell you what Mandela will do, which is even more interesting because Castro does it too and Denzel does it. He flips on his back and sunbathes. The one thing, you know, speaking of me personally, because my dogs always come up, but the one thing I won't do if a dog can't breathe, <laughs> I've just seen that, Brandon, but if a dog can't breathe, I won't breed it. 
I don't breed. This is this is basic dog breeding. If my dogs can't breathe without going, ah, ah, if my dogs can't go outside on, and I'm not telling y'all y'all got to put your dogs outside on a hundred degree day, you know everybody ain't built for that. But in normal clients, climates and normal temperatures, you know what I'm saying, say it's a 75 degree day and your dog can't go out in the front yard and run around and be a dog, that's not a dog. If you can't take your dog for a mile walk, that's not a dog. Not long a mile jog, you know what I mean? If y'all know me, I am I work out. As a matter of fact, I'm about to go in here and do legs. And, you know, Danny will tell you, Danny's property is, I think, an acre or so, and the dogs run freely when they, when they let them out the cage. And these dogs run and run and run and run and run and run. Danny stays in damn near Miami. Any time of the day, Danny will Danny will let the dogs out. They run and run and run and run. The same thing at my house. They run and run and run. These are machines, man. No more excuses about, oh, and this and that and the other. No, it, these are machines. It's a reason why the dog is supposed to be built like it's supposed to be built because you're building machines. The reason why you don't want a dog with a long ass back is because it's disproportionate. Have you ever seen a Dotson win a race? You know? Hey, the, hey, Douglas, you one of the people who witnessed it. The dog will take it. You know what I mean? Is there any excluded bloodlines? Yes, Miyagi and uh, and Bullseye. And the reason why, if, if anybody hasn't heard, we know that Miyagi is mixed with a lot of French bulldogs. The man admitted to it. We can't allow it. You know what I mean? Uh, I have seen some beautiful dogs that have Miyagi blood in them. But this particular dog, you know, he's not allowed. Um, Bullseye, we know he's a bulldog. As we go on, and, and we're not we're not ashamed to say it, some of these dogs that we know have hung papers, as their as their offspring are, are included more and more into our database, and we can do more and more DNA testing on them, we will remove some of those dogs too. You know what I mean? The the roachback needs to go. The roachback needs to go. That's not proper. Bad hips are not proper. We want to start. We want to start having a community to where we can say our dogs are great. You know. You know, Danny, Danny said he's going to put up a video this weekend. Dogs out running, dogs out working. Danny's crazy ass will put the dog. He's still you know, putting the dogs on the uh, on, 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 on the damn rope and hanging them over his head and swinging them around. I'd be worried the damn dog going to fly off and hit a cabinet somewhere. I know Margie probably be worried too. But Danny, you know, Danny, make, Danny is an old pit bull guy. He's going to make sure his dogs can do what they do. That's what it's supposed to do. No, Dax is not banned. You know, uh, there's never been enough information to ban Dax. Although we might not like some of the qualities and people might have their suspicions, there's never been proven to a fact of anything that was done wrong with Dax. So he's there. People ask about Carolina Bully Farm. Carolina Bully Farm's dogs are not banned because at this point in time, there's one particular dog that had an issue, but the, the issues that go along with that are also questionable. You know, it's hard to it's hard to take into uh, it's hard to take into effect or belief anything that certain people say when it seems to be agendas. I'm just being real. I'm just being realistic with y'all. But we are taking the American bully back that all of these oversized dogs that can't move, that are lumbering around the uh, ring looking like basset hounds. It is time for us to take back our breed and make sure that we do exactly what we are supposed to be doing with our breed. Our, our dogs can run. They can move. This is an athletic freak. You know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, a couch potato, in a way, we would ever promote a couch potato dog, Mr. Royale. You know what I mean? Do I think the thug came from a bulldog? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I can't I can't say where you know that Thug came from. I will give you a little bit of history on this. Thug does have gray line dogs in him. Um, Thug, you know, has a lot of edge blood in him. But you know, the, the the premise that there was not big dogs around beforehand is ridiculous. You know, uh, Eddie from Blue Line uh, put up all these damn old things to where it was dogs that they called pit bulls that was a hundred pounds. You know what I mean? Going all the way back to the eighteen hundreds. He was schooling people on some things, and they called them pit bulls. Now, whether it's debatable, it's debatable. But the funniest thing about those kind of things is thug of is thug of uh, a bulldog. You know what I mean? Is this dog mixed with a bulldog? Is that dog mixed with a bulldog? At this point in time, it doesn't even matter. I know at the time when thug was around, we didn't like bulldogs, so that 
it is what it is. If you ever seen Thug in person, Thug never looked like a bulldog. In some pictures, Thug looks like a bulldog, but I've seen him in person many times. He didn't look like a bulldog. Very thick, very well put together, very good moving dog that lived to be about 11 or 12 years old. But, you know, we can't say what dogs somebody tried to mix something in with or not because you had a thousand breeders doing a thousand different things. But the one thing that we can say for our registry is that none of those things will be allowed anymore. We're here to clean up. We're not here to reflect and make excuses on what used to be. We're here to, we're, we, right now, we're here to clean up. That's it. You know, Thug was a very beautiful dog, and that's why Thug won a lot of shows. He had no real bulldog features about him at all. He didn't have a bunch of loose skin. He didn't have anything. He was very big, very, very nice dog. You know, those who've seen him will tell you. You know, I've seen pictures where it looked like he had loose skin. He just didn't. I don't know. You know, pictures can do a thousand things. But Thug was a very, very beautiful dog. You know, that's how he produced the baddest bitch to ever live. You know, but there are a lot of dogs that's in question. You know, they, we used to have questions about Monster G. We used to have questions about Corrupt. We used to have questions about a ton of dogs. But at this point in time, it just doesn't matter. What we're focusing on right now is what people are doing right now. That's what we're focusing on because this is the only thing that we can control and we can change. We can go out through the history and we can pinpoint a lot of dogs throughout the history of this breed, but we can't change anything and we can't prove anything, you know. So at this point in time, going forward, the correct way for us to do this would be to go directly at the problems that we see at hand. If you see a train wreck in the ring, if you see a dog that has a bad tail in the uh in the ring if you see a dog that has a high rear in the ring if you see a dog that has horrible hips in the ring you don't award those dogs and if these situations are as, at such a level that we are to that point where we feel like this shouldn't be bred you do the right thing and you pull the papers how many dogs have y'all seen actually had their paperwork pulled this is why our community is considered to be a joke I'll say that again. This is why our community is considered to be a joke. We have the worst confirmation, worst, some of the worst health dogs in the whole entire world, and yet and still no dogs are banned. No breeders are banned for the things that they do. No dogs are being DNA tested. No dogs are being drug tested when there's a, a bunch of drug issues that we believe is going on in this community. We, we, have, we have a lot of dogs that are suspected of being, you know what I mean, mixed with other breeds. But we won't DNA test those dogs. We are going to DNA test those dogs. And yes, it will, it will cost us money. We understand that. We will lose money by not being able to register all the little terrible puppies that uh, we don't want around. But at the end of the day, in 10 years, we will have the real American bully. We will eliminate all of these issues. This is going to be truly the elite registry. And this is why I had to go get help. I had to get the organization part of it together. And, you know, I don't have any problem saying we were struggling with the organization part of it because it was one or two people doing way too much. But right now, the one thing we have never compromised is our morals on what the dog should be. You know, I don't ever want to see after a show that people putting up videos of the show and you see a dog that obviously is not the winner getting a ribbon. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. We want fair competition. You know, we want fair competition. I mean, Lance Black, I do believe most paperwork is bogus, but this is why you change it. We can reflect on everything that's wrong with this breed. We can reflect on everything that's wrong with the world, but we can't change that. But we can change today. And this is why we starting off with everything being DNA tested that's going to be bred. We will have DNA profiles on everything. If we think something is up, we will address it, whether it's a drug test or whether it's a DNA test uh, or whatever the th situation may be. We are trying to make this a very clean, you know, reputable situation. We hope to advance to the point to where we can get it to where more people are health testing and especially testing the hips on their dogs. What's going on, Gil? <coughs> we, want, we want it to be... Uh, you know, oh man, for sure, Will. I know it and I appreciate it, brother. Richie Poe, I ain't even see you on there. But this is the thing. You know, we are not just an American bully community. We are a pit bull community, you know. Now we are a Rottweiler, a Doberman, a Boxer. You know, we got a lot of breeds. Every breed will be held to the very, very same standard, you know. I, you know, 
I, I, we, we're not allowing any Miyagi. I'm going to tell you why. This is a theory, you know. Not a theory, but this is the truth. If we allow any Miyagi into this thing, we're in trouble. And this is the reason being is because if you're a true breeder, even if it's in the fourth or fifth generation, you can line breed from the fourth or fifth generation and bring those same characteristics, which we agree don't belong in our breed, right back to the forefront. At some point in time, you have to dedicate yourself to doing the right thing. You have to be willing to turn away money. You have to be able to uh, turn away popularity just to do the right thing. If you can't do these two things, one thing has been proven in this community that if you can't turn away money, if you can't turn away popularity, all you're going to do is damage the breed. Our, our, our rules are going to be very, very strict. And trust me, people are not going to like everything that we say. People are not going to like everything that we do. But it'll be the best for the breed. It's just that simple. We will never instruct our judges to pick certain dogs because of who they're affiliated with. We will never, uh, we, our, our judges will be evaluated and we will address the situation if it comes about. But our judges are, we hope that our judges have the eyes to look at certain dogs and look at them from every angle. Look at them from the front, look at them from the side, look at their movement, look at their tif temperament, their body, uh, you know, their, their body composition. You know, everything has to fit, you know. Everything has to fit, you know, is this dog when I say composition, you know, is this dog overly fat, you know, and not enough muscle? Is it, you know, when we start talking about the, the angles of the dog, is the dog long? Is the dog, you know, wobbly? What, whatever the thing may be, is many different things that you can break down about a dog. We want the best. Because as we go forward in this breed, the only way that we can go forward, I appreciate it, Joiner. Don't, what's going on, Brian Robertson? The only way that we can succeed in this breed is by making specimens. What's going on, T? We have to make specimens. You know, we have to make dogs with drive. We have to make dogs that can run. We have to make dogs that can close their mouths and breathe and not die. We have to make dogs. What we see right now, I'm not trying to criticize anybody individually, but what we see right now is you see a bunch of people who do a bunch of breedings and hope that they can get one dog that makes people say, oh, he's nice. All, you, all we're doing is overpopulating the breed and we're taking the science out of it. True breeders are going to do one breeding to try to get multiple good dogs, not a million breedings to get one dog. That's ass backwards. This is why I told y'all, you go to your local pounds, you go to your uh, <clears throat> local registries, uh, not registries, but uh, rescues, and all you're going to see is our dogs in there. You know, you'll see some exotics, you'll see some pit bullish dogs, you'll see a lot of bullies, and the reason this is happening is because people don't care. You know? I mean, Skip Miller is one of the best. You know what I mean? His knowledge is his knowledge is incredible, and we want to have more Skip Millers there. We want to have more uh, Danny Novoas there. We're gonna get Danny's coming out, man. We're gonna pull Danny out the house. I guarantee y'all. I'm putting a guarantee on it right now. Danny will be in Jersey. You know, him and his lovely wife. We're gonna get him to Jersey because you know these guys will talk dogs with you all day and judge the dogs, keep the ring going. We expect giant shows in Jersey this time with the promotion that we have going on up there. And it's, it's time to, to make a change in this community, period. You know, this is why, you know, we, we're doing shows months and months and months out now. And uh, as, as we will announce the dates for Jersey, then we'll announce the dates for Florida. Then we're going to move over to Texas. And we're starting to work on the Midwest. I know for sure we'll be in Canton, Ohio in August. And th th this is the time, you know, we're not trying to be the, we're not trying to be the biggest registry. We're trying to be the highest quality registry. You know, we want to have that attitude when you come to our registry that guess what, man, if you don't do anything else, you got to have the best dogs. That's fine. Yeah, Will, Skip Skip is like a damn encyclopedia of dogs, not just bullies, you know. And we have quite a few dudes like that, man. Wait till y'all wait, wait meet my dude, Jose Barone, up, uh, up out of Cali by way of Mexico. But dude knows his shit. We got we got true dog men that, that knows 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 their shit, you know, and we want the best dogs. We want when people come to our shows to be like, wow, no controversial shit, just wow, you know. 
And we want people to be a little bit afraid to come to the TBKC. If you if you have as a registry, if you have people who are somewhat intimidated by your show ring, I think you're doing a great job. Because one thing about it is, and I always use the AKC, and I had a chance to, uh, you know what I mean, to uh, go to the what is that the. Uh, CKC was that the Columbia? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, it was the uh, BKC, the Bogota uh, Kennel Club. But you know, to see people and to see the reaction, the intensity of going there, and almost the intimidation of some of these people. People didn't walk into their shows and just felt like they owned the place. People were grooming their dogs. People were doing extra training. People had a certain tension, a good tension, but they felt like, damn it, I got to come in here and I got to be the best that I can be, period, or I don't have a chance. That's what we want. I don't need 500 dogs to show up. I need 50 good dogs. You know, I don't need all of these people. I don't need all these extra things. We'll put up nice banners. We've got the trophies and the molds and all this stuff. You'll get all the fluffage that you want. But inside that ring, I want your heart to beat a little bit different when you're walking into a TBKC ring. Because you know at this point in time, my judges are assassins. I'm pushing them to be assassins. I want my judges to go in there. No, no Miyagi blood. I I'm, I'm want my judges to go in there and shred these dogs to pieces. In a good way. But I feel like if, if my judges can go in here and shred these dogs to pieces and we're going to be in Puerto Rico, we're going to be in Jamaica. Uh, we, we have a judge now coming in from Canada. We're going to be in Canada. I have a video chat tomorrow about seeing some other things being done in Canada right now. We're making a lot of ground now. Like I said, finally, I've got people who know how to do this shit. So I did, you know, I did get help finally. But the part that I always focus on is dog and quality control. And that's something that me and Danny are very very adept at doing we are going to push this thing to a level that when you come here y'all heard me make fun of this and it, it's, it's funny but when you we, when you come here and you see that tbkc logo you understand that this is rolls royce shit this is not you know no offense because i drive one but this is not chevy dodge shit this is rolls royce shit this is the top of the top if you come here and people see whenever whoever gets the first tbkc championship plaque you know th people are going to understand this means something again and I'm not disrespecting everybody who's won championships at different places, but y'all don't remember a couple years ago. And I was disheartened, you know. I got emotional and I, you know, and I probably shouldn't have done it. I ain't gonna lie, I probably shouldn't have done it. Sometimes I have regrets because some of those trophies was Hallies and different shit. But I went right out to the dumpster and I took big totes and, and in my 90 gallon uh, trash can, I went on here, bloom, bloom. Bloom and threw, you know, literally a couple hundred trophies and ribbons and threw that shit in the trash. And at that time, it was just because the passion that got to me. But the, the thing about it is, is that it meant nothing anymore. A title that somebody is willing to give somebody, a title that is, uh, is, is willing to pick something other than the best. It doesn't mean anything anymore. If I can buy a title, it means nothing. In this registry, I didn't go through all of this to do that. I didn't go through the, I didn't go through all this to demean what we worked so hard for. The champions in this registry, if I don't promise y'all any damn thing else, I promise you a champion. You know, I promise you a Muhammad Ali, a Mike Tyson, a Michael Jordan. I promise you something that if your dog has that plaque, you can put it in somebody's face and they'll never question it because they're going to tell you those judges over there are assholes. Yeah, we're assholes for the right cause, though. We gonna find tooth comb, uh, go over your dog with a fine tooth comb, and we gonna find the excellence in the ring. It's something great in this breed. It's something great in all of these breeds. I don't just want to talk about one breed, but we are on the topic of American Bully. It's something great in the American Bully. I pointed out the bear. It's greatness in that dog. Years from now, in ten years from now, we gonna see a picture of the bear, and that's a great dog. It's a shame that he didn't get everything that he had coming to him while he was here. But in 10 years from now, we're going to look at the bear. That was a great dog. That's, that's the level that we want to see. When we look at a Mufasa, that's a great dog. You know, there are other great dogs out there. You know, Shifu didn't show that much. Great dog. You know, I've seen some other beautiful dogs in the ring, and I don't even know their names, but there have been great dogs who represent this breed at a certain level. Ruger, you know what I mean? Um... 
Bison, who did get a lot of championships. But when we go through our champions, we want to put you in the halls of greatness. So if you win a championship here, your dog will be compared <coughs> to a bear. Your dog will be compared to a Mufasa. There won't be thoughts of anybody's mind saying, well, he's a champion, but how is his rear? Uh -uh. Because if he got a bad rear, he's not going to be a champion here. This is simple shit. But I get made out oftentimes to be the bad guy by talking about simple things. No, a dog with a long ass back shouldn't be a champion. He's got a long back. No, a dog with a high rear, you know what I mean, shouldn't be that. My thoughts on the Rottweilers, the Rottweiler, we're not taking no shit with the Rottweilers. We're not going to some of those some of those head shapes that I see with the Rottweiler look like they're suffering from some type of, dwarf, uh, not dwarfism, but some Down syndrome and something going on there. No, we're, we're sticking to the classic Rottweiler. We're not, stick, we're not having 200-pound Rottweilers. We're not having none of that. We stick to the standard. We stick to the standard. Floyd May, you're, you're, you're incorrect. They don't give the Patriots a trophy every year. The Patriots win their trophies. And when, they're, and when they are done winning their trophies, they will be looked at like some of these other dogs we're talking about. They earn theirs. Every champion earns theirs. No champion should ever be given anything. You know? Exactly. You know, I, I mean, you said it, Amanda. The ABKC will champ out a high rear dog. I don't, I don't. We're not doing that. If the dog has a terribly high rear, I can see if it's something very slight. But you know, we we want to we want to reel everything in to make everything at the highest level. Who is afraid of the highest level? I don't want my dogs to win at a low level. That means nothing to me. Your ribbon means nothing to me if I beat a bunch of suspect dogs and my dog in itself is suspect, but I was the best of the suspect dogs. It means nothing. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, to, to put it in relevance, you know, I mean, we just watched the fight this weekend. Deontay Wilder knocked out, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Ortiz. And Ortiz is a great fighter himself, but the truth of the matter is, is I'm going to tell you the truth. You get, you know, 99% of the, the, the basic community, and I knock the hell out of them. You know what I mean? You put me in there with normal people as a as a trained fighter, I whoop most of their asses. Do I want a, a, a heavyweight championship belt? I wouldn't deserve it because you got Wilders in the world. You got Ortiz's in the world. You got, you got dudes who can really damn fight in the heavyweight division. You know, you put me in there with a bunch of suspect guys, yeah, I knock them out. And this is what I look at the American bully community as, is that we got a bunch of suspect dogs, but you put them at a low level, but then you give them the title of being the greatest in the world. That's not the way it is. We need true heavyweight bouts in this breed. We need the best of the best, you know? Structure scares these people, man. The structure scare. You know why structure talk scares people is because it's the most basic essence of what we do. Structure is the thing you can't really lie about. The video when you see that dog moving, you can't lie about that. When you take that side shot and the dog is this long compared to the dog being this long, you know it's it, it, it's something that you can't lie about. You can't lie about structure. You know. People want to lie about everything else. You know what I mean? They always go to my dogs and they'll Photoshop a long back of my dogs or they'll Photoshop this or they'll Photoshop that. They live by the lie. We, we want to eliminate all of that fluffage. You know? You got grand champions that can't even breathe and barely, you know, and barely can make it around the ring. You got dogs shitting all over the ring. You know, no, this is not what a champion is. Does a champion really just cop, cop down with nerves and take a diarrhea shit all over the ring? And you award him a ribbon. That's we can't do that. You know, we had that happen at one of our shows. Unfortunately, you know, a lady's dog probably a little nervous, took a dump in the ring, and it was probably going to win the show. But uh, as a judge, how can I go and hand a dog that just shit all over the ring a ribbon? Now, now I'm gonna tell you, and y'all gonna ask me this: What's the difference between a dog that pisses in the ring and a dog that shits in the ring? <coughs> Dogs pee to mark their territory. So when you get a, especially when you get a very very a crew of true studs and dominant dogs they'll start pissing on everything our judges are not going to really you know we don't want to discount you for that because it's their nature 
you know, you see a stud and they, you know, they see another stud and it's, it's my ring. This is my ring. And, you know, they're going to keep on like, all right, dude. I mean, it makes for a stinky situation. But that's something that studs do. You don't mark your territory by shitting all over the place. That's, just, <laughs> that's unacceptable. You know, but I want attitude. I want, I want, I want an animal that we can be proud of. That's it. And if people think I'm crazy for wanting a dog that's symmetrical, meaning that his back matches his front and all of the measurements add up, that a dog that's in shape with good muscle tone, a dog with great conformation, a dog that bounces around the ring with his head and his tail held high with great confidence and great energy and just a, a statue of a dog. If people say I'm crazy for wanting that, well, I feel like they're crazy for not wanting it. No more excuses. I'm not here to hate. I'm not here to argue with anybody. And to be honest, y'all won't even hear me arguing with anybody because as I've said on another video, and I'm not even being braggadocious, I'm just being truthful. 90% of these guys who talk shit on these other boards and all that, they can't even begin to talk dogs with me because they can't talk structure. If you can't talk structure, you can't talk dogs with me because everything. Yeah, I heard about the dog pissing blood all over the place. You know, that's supposed to be kicked out. I don't blame that on the registry. The only thing I blame on the registry is if, if you had our show and your dog is just pissing blood everywhere, someone's going to ask you, hey, can you take the dog, you know, to get some medical attention? It shouldn't be out here. No telling what that is. It's causing the dog to pee like that. But we don't want that pissing blood, shitting blood, you know, throwing up all over the place, all that slimy shit all over the place. People are coming out here to have a good time and got their dogs properly vaccinated. And we're going to do a great show. And then you bringing this dude around here, bringing Ebola. You, that's unacceptable. Not only is it unacceptable on the most common level, whereas the dog safety, but it's unacceptable, you know, uh, from the from the optics of it. You don't want to have a you don't want to have a dog in this community and the dog is pissing and shitting everywhere. People come to your show and they're looking at you like, whoa. You know, and exactly you have to blame you have to blame the owners. But at the same time, the registry as as registries, as show hosts, we have we have a uh, responsibility to protect the dogs that we are inviting to our shows, too. So if we see that, we have to ask you to leave. Absolutely. Unstable animals, dogs that are very, very shy and all of a sudden lunging and barking and growling. We have to ask those dogs, if not to leave the place. But can you cage that dog? Because you're putting other animals at risk. You're putting other people at risk. These are all basic things that we've lost control of in our community. As dog owners, we should know. I have a I have a couple dogs at home that I know for a fact I couldn't take to a dog show. You know, I got a bitch that as soon as she sees your dog, she's gonna try to get him, him or her. That's how that's how aggressive she is. You know what I mean? Now she people friendly. She's very people friendly. But as far as other dogs, she don't like other dogs. You know, can't take her out to a damn dog show. Just that simple. Barely can take her for a walk. She sees other dogs and she ready to hit them. You know, she still got a lot of game. She still got a lot of pit bull in her. We, you know, it's not something that we can do. But that's called being responsible. You know, in the bully world, it's just so far. It's so it's so far gone that people just think that they can do anything. You know, people bring dirty dogs and bring them into the ring. Why didn't you wash your dog before you took it in the ring? You know. Exactly, Jonathan. We have to leave hot dogs. I mean, it's, it's it's about having respect for everyone else there. You know, if your dog is very hot, but you still want to go to the show, it's always cool to go to the show by yourself. You know, you and your spouse can go to the show. Y'all bring the kids out. Enjoy yourself. But don't have that on your mind that you have to bring your dog out knowing that this could be a situation. Because the one thing about dogs is just, is just this. One dog can start a melee. Because y'all know it like I know it if you have multiple dogs. One dog starts turning aggressive. It's the other dog's nature to be like, you know what? He's messed up the energy now. You know, the, one bad dog challenges a lot of dogs that may not have been super alphas. But now they feel like just because you tripping, dude, now we want to bust your ass. You know, I have a dog like that at the house. You know, can't really too much be around any of the dogs. They all hate him, you know because of his because of his demeanor they just can't just, i literally tell you how bad it is with his energy is i had a bitch break out of her cage where her crate she was in the house literally break out of her crate and bite this dog in the ass when when he was getting brought by she was that intent and they never had an issue but his energy is so bad that he starts so much shit she don't bother none of the other dogs like that 
his ass come by, she literally broke out of her cage and lunged onto his ass. She's like, I'm gonna get your ass. And and, and this is a this is a thing. When you bring a dog with very negative energy and he brings that energy to the show, they'll rile up the other dogs and you'll notice before it, even if your dog was calm, you'd be like, Why is my dog growling and looking at this dog different? This is nature. You know, we getting into dog training and, and, you know, in dog psychology, but trust me, this is nature. It's their nature with a pack mentality. Dogs will pack up with dogs that aren't even in their, you know, they're not a natural pack. But if they find something in common, we all don't like this bitch. We, they, they'll turn into a pack. You have, you have some couple perfectly strange ass dogs that don't know each other, but you get one asshole dog that's tripping and dogs that don't know each other will jump him. Like, dude, you try, ah, ah, next thing you know, every like, why did, why did you jump in the fight? It was, cause he's the problem. He's the problem. It happens a lot, you know? You know, well, the thing, the, the thing of it is, uh, you know, with, with pit bulls is we've had a, we've had pit bulls at a show. We know how to handle them, you know? A true pit bull owner knows how to handle their pit bull. We know what they're capable of. We know what they're built for. So as they come in the ring, the spacing is different. We clear more because you know what they're there for. You know what I mean? You have to, you know, the owners know how to handle them. No, you know, we'll, we'll allow the pit bull owners to have, you know, not your basic show leads all the time because you might have to have something a little stronger with the pit bulls. This is basic dog stuff. We know this. You know, certain dogs are going to show sh certain characteristics and that's all a part of there and we don't punish them for it. And, and believe it or not, when you're judging the true pit bull terrier, a female that actually will go at a male or a female is actually more towards the breed type than a dog that doesn't look at, uh, that doesn't look at, uh, like say a female that don't, won't go at a male. She's actually more breed type. The dog that's more game is more breed type for a pit bull that's willing to go after either or. Now, we not, you know, of course, we're not there to fight them. But when you talk about the breed and the breed characteristics, this is what it is. As a judge, we can't take points off because this is what this dog is. This is the essence of what this breed is. Just like as you see, you know, your Rottweilers and your Dobermans. That you know they they should be very much in control, but you can't really blame a Rottweiler or a Doberman for being more standoffish with people. You'll see them stare them down a little more stiff. Sometimes you you know you'll see the dog you know stare the crowd down or whatever. These are guard dogs by nature. So sometimes if their attention is a little bit broken and you see them going to guard dog mode and you'll see them post up and look at the crowd a little bit, that's his drive. That's his nature. That's him ready to do what he was built to do. What he's made to do. You can't take those points off for that dog. That is his nature. You know, we have to, as judges, our judges are trained to understand the nature of the beast too. If you've ever, a lot of us watch Westminster. Well, if you notice when you watch Westminster, the guy with the silky smooth voice on there, and this is the Patterdale Terrier. <laughs> that dude, the dude with the silky smooth voice, he tells you exactly what the dog's purpose was, what the dog was bred for. He'll even tell you that the dog is, you know, sometimes jovial and sometimes a little bit extra. So certain dogs that are known for being hyper and have a bounce in their uh, a bounce in their step or might want to play with the judge they don't get points off for being a little bouncy and a little extra you know some dogs don't have any personality at all you know one of those dogs is like the basset hound the basset hound is known for being slow and lumbering and sort of chill that's who he is it's actually a flaw for a basset hound to come in there and start breakdancing and running circles around the ring like this ain't what a basset hound is supposed to do you know he's supposed to be more chill Every, <laughs> every dog has its purpose and we have to elevate our game to not just pick what we like, but pick what is to that standard. And are we true breeders that we are breeding to every aspect of the animal? Once we make it, make it to that level, then we can talk about how great of a breed we have or we don't have. And that's going to include all breeds. Uh, me and Jamie Sweet, we, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a very, very good talk about the shorty bulls. And we're going to, uh, you know, and I'm going to rely on some of the other shorty bull uh, people uh, in particular to, to get the shorty bull together. You know, whether it's their lap 
Alapaha. I'm doing a lot more, even though I bred Alapahas, I'm doing a lot more research on the Alapahas to fine tune the uh, to fine tune everything with the Alapaha. We have to get it to a point to that we are perfecting our breeds and not just carrying on with our breeds, not just giving ribbons because we want to have shows and we want to bring in revenue and people want to do videos and people want to sell T-shirts and this and that and the other. No, we are a dog community. If nobody makes any money, if nobody uh, if nobody is able to sell anything, if nobody is able to rap today and all of these different things, that is fine. But the main thing that we are here for is to perfect these dogs, to perfect them. We have to have the healthiest. What's going on, Corey? What's going on, Adam? You know, you know, <laughs> Douglas said about dog, but you know, but that, that's a little bit of protection drive, man. If your dog won't let nobody approach your car, he, you know, you, you can't, I mean, this is, this is what our dogs do. You know, we're not punishing our dogs. You know, even the American bully, it's this concept with the American bully that the American bully is supposed to be a totally I love people dog. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's supposed to be very, very cool with people, but it's not it's it's not a flaw for an American bully to protect this area. That is not a flaw. What is a flaw is an overall aggression towards people. Like, say, with, for instance, with Mandela, you know, Mandela when people see it, oh, he's so nice. He's nice because I hand the leash off to people. He sees me and he sees that it's comfortable and he can relax. But when he's at home or if somebody approaches me a little loud or whatever, you'll see the hair stand up on his back and he'll stand at attention in his, you know, and he, he gets in that mode. When he's at home, you know, our, our front our front fence is like a steel fence so you can see through the bars or whatever. You can see everything moving. People come up to the gate and you would think that this dog was damn, had rabies or something the way he's banging the gate and growling. There's nothing wrong with that because when I come out there and I, hey, get your ass in here, man, you know, he's happy again. That you don't punish the dog for that. We've lost the science of dog making. You know? And this is what I want to get everybody back to as I end this thing. Y'all think about this. Y'all, y'all, you know, we, we, we will have our, like I say, right now, I might even be in the process of switching companies to do something greater with the website. But it will be a very, 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 very soon. We, we, we were discussing that today. But with all the standards and everything being said, remember that, you know, you want to breed a dog in every aspect, in every characteristic to be the best dog that you can have. You want great conformation. You want a great temperament. You want great health. You know, and like I told you, if your dog can't run, if you can't take your dog to the dog park, if you can't go out and throw the Frisbee or you can't throw, uh, you know, the, the, the tennis ball and your dog go out there, or if he ain't got a jolly ball, if your dog cannot live a normal life of playing and enjoying itself, it's not a dog. I don't know. That's a liability. <laughs> exactly. Will controlled aggression. You know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, it, people, we have to get to a point that we are excelling at making quality dogs, not what people likes. You know what I mean? H hold on one second, y'all. Hey, try the other door and you can walk in the office to the left. Yeah, you know, always working. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the thing of it is, is, is that we have to do better. And this is what the TBKC is. This is what we represent. Uh, I'm very excited. New energy. Like I told you, I talked to some great people today. One of them is a personal friend of mine. And, uh, you know, office and everything, we, we, we finally making it. And uh, I'm just happy because I don't have to deal with any of the office stuff and try to talk to y'all. Now y'all see a lot more videos, a lot more content. Y'all probably see me a little bit of everywhere because we even have a guy who's working on that now. But uh Show wise, like I say, Jersey is locked in for four. We're going to try to lock in at least two more because the timing is going to be sort of bad. But uh, at least two more, possibly we'll get a third or fourth in. Who knows? We might end up doing some shows that's a couple weeks or three weeks behind each other. We're going to get in what we can get in, but we're going to have a good time in Jersey. Uh, I'll be announcing the first four dates tonight, and you'll see me scattering those around. Then we'll have the flyers and all that stuff made up. Uh, Florida. This is, a, this is my promise. This is my word to you, Florida. You will have between a dozen and 16 shows in the state of Florida for 2020. Uh, we already have everything locked up with Lakeland. We will be announcing those dates this week. Uh, also, um, Ohio, Midwest, in general, you know, that's the Indiana, Chicago, the whole areas. Uh, we will be there, and, and our plan is to get there, you know, 10 times between uh, those states in the Midwest, at least 10 times. We're going to do our best, man. We're going to do our best to get there, and uh, 
as I've told y'all, show hosts, y'all can start getting with me and we can do some plans. Uh, we'll see about California. I got a lot of plugs out there in different areas of California from the north to the south, but we will get there, man. I thank y'all for y'all patience, but y'all, y'all take what I said to heart, man. You know, we looking for the best dogs. We're not looking for a lot of dogs. We're looking for dogs that fit what we're trying to do. And we, uh, <sighs> We got to do it. Hey, Corey Francis, that's where I'm about to go, man. About to put in some work. But, uh, you know, God bless all y'all, man. And uh, a lot of y'all care about this breed. Y'all care about all these breeds, man. Don't fall into the trap of these suckers trying to get everybody into arguments and trying to derail and divert the conversation to things that it has nothing to do about. We talking about health. We talking about, man, you know we got to get a couple shows in Kentucky. You know, but uh, oh, I get to meet you, Amanda. Yeah, Lakeland. We'll we'll actually be at that Lakeland location. We'll actually have uh, about eight shows at the Lakeland location alone. That's why Florida is going to have so many. Me and Danny gonna get on the phone. We are gonna try to get something closer down there to uh, the West Palm area and get those wrapped up. Then we gonna try to get something up towards Pensacola and uh, Jacksonville. You know, we we gonna work. We gonna work the state of Florida because that's uh, home for us, really. Even though I'm over here and uh, over here in Texas. Florida is still home and, uh, you know, Ohio is still home. So we got to make those places happen. But, uh, man, y'all push this healthy dog thing, man. Y'all push the healthy dog. Y'all push the great confirmation dog. And y'all don't let anybody make y'all feel like that uh, you got to be ashamed of pushing something with quality, man. You know, forget all those idiots. We're going to do this the right way, man. Uh, radio show. I know I done told y'all a million times with radio show. We're going to get that baby back in motion this week. Uh Actually, it'll be a week from today. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Saturday, Ohio State versus some team that wears blue and gold. And, uh, you know, the Cleveland Browns versus some team that wears black and gold. I don't know what it is about gold, but I can't stand neither one of them bitches. So uh, <laughs> I'll be busy for two days, you know, partying. <coughs> but uh, radio show back Monday. We're going to do the show like we used to do it Monday and Thursdays or, or, or Mondays and Wednesdays. And we're going to get it going out. Uh, Okay, okay, Hen, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Uh, shit, I got you, I got you. Uh, matter of fact, I got you. <laughs> it's funny, I got you a pack. That tells you how bad I've been, man. Oh, you moving to Georgia, Amanda. We're going to be in Georgia, too, you know. <laughs> but uh, any of y'all who think you might be interested in throwing a show, TBKC Dogs for the moment, TBKC uh, uh, Dogs at gmail.com. Hit us up. Let us know something, man. We're willing to work with you. We got sponsors. We can get all this thing moving. You know, TBKC Dogs, I'm on there now, so I'll be answering a lot of y'all. You know, we did some... I had an assistant, but it wasn't working out, as y'all can tell. So now I'm uh, getting me a professional assistant, so things will run a lot smoother. So TBKC Dogs, if you want to throw a show, if you got locations, get with me. Let's make that happen, man. But healthy dogs matter. That is it. Healthy dogs matter. Much love. God bless y'all during this season. As y'all know, I keep on reminding y'all that. Call your grandma. Call your sister, your brother, your mama, your daddy. Call family members and loved ones and let them know you care about them. This is the highest time of the year for depression and suicides. I don't know what it is about the holidays. Maybe just people getting in their feelings, but you never know what anyone is going through. Call them. Let them know you love them, man. That one call might change a life, might save a life. Until next time, y'all. God bless. Peace.